In this video, we're going to continue our work looking at De Moivre's theorem to prove trig identities. Let's go back to something we learned some time ago. If we got z to the n, we can write this as cos n theta plus i sine n theta. If we have z to the negative n, we have cos of negative n theta plus i sine of negative n theta. And using our rules of odd and even functions, we could write this now as z to the negative n was equal to cos n theta minus i sine n theta. If you need to review that section, please do. So now what we've got, and we'll just get rid of that middle one, um, we've got the following scenario. z to the negative n is cos n theta minus i sine n theta, and then z to the positive n is cos theta plus i sine n theta. Uh, cos m theta. So what we're going to do now is just work with these. The first thing I'm going to do is add them. If I add them, and I'm going to write them slightly differently, I've got z to the n plus, and we can write this as 1 over z to the n, 1 over z to the n. Adding them, cos m theta plus cos m theta is 2 cos m theta. So 2 cos m theta. Then if I add these two, these are going to disappear. We've got a plus and a minus. And this gives rise to some, a really quite important result z to the n plus 1 over z to the n is 2 cos n theta. If we now subtract them, z to the n minus 1 over z to the n, you can see what's going to happen here. Cos n theta minus cos n theta is 0. i sine n theta minus i sine n theta is minus minus. It's going to give us a plus. So we end up now with 2i sine n theta. And this is yet another important result. So that's the general term. And we could write, of course, z plus 1 over z is going to be equal to 2 cos theta. And then z minus 1 over z is equal to 2i sine theta when n is equal to 1. OK, when sine theta, uh, so did I say sine n theta? Sine theta. So this is when n is equal to 1. What we're now going to do is prove a trig identity using these results. In this question, it says, use applications of De Moivre's theorem to prove the following trig identities. And we've got cos to the 4 theta is equal to 1 eighth, cos 4 theta plus 4, cos 2 theta plus 3. OK, so let's just give ourselves some space. Now, we know using the binomial expansion, we uh, showed in the last video that we can expand these out, collect it all up, and equate the uh, real and imaginary parts. If we just consider the following, if I write now 2 cos theta to the power of 4, this would be equal to z plus 1 over z to the power of 4. Therefore, what we can say now is 16, that's 2 to 4, cos to the 4th theta is going to be equal to z plus 1 over z to the 4th power. I need cos to the fourth. So we're going to need to divide our answer by 16 at the end, and we'll worry about that when we come to it. All I'm going to do is use the binomial expansion on this, and we're going to do it to the power of 4. The coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. These are off Pascal's triangle. So let's do that. We're going to have now z to the fourth plus 4, then we're going to have z cubed, and then we're going to have 1 over z. Then we're going to have plus 6z squared, 1 over z squared, plus 4z, 1 over z cubed, and then finally plus 1 over z to the fourth. I'm now going to collect these up. So what we've got then is z to the fourth plus 1 over z to the fourth. So I can write this as z to the 4th plus 1 over z to the 4th. If we now consider this one right here, we've got 4, and the z cubed and the 1 over z is going to give me z squared. And this one, I've got 4, I've got z multiplied by 1 over z cubed, which is going to give me 1 over z squared. So I've got 4, z squared plus 1 over z squared. 
And then finally, if we look here, z squared over z squared is going to cancel, which leaves me plus 6. So if we just move this over now, let's pick this up and move it. We know that this right here is going to be equal to 16. So we can write this now as 16 cos to the fourth theta is equal to this. Now, let's just go back a second. We know z to the n is going to be equal to cos n theta plus i sine n theta. We know z to the negative n is going to be equal to cos n theta minus i sine n theta. And that gave rise to z to the n plus 1 over z to the n is equal to 2 cos n theta. So if we just match this up here, we can see that this is going to give me 2 cos 4 theta. So we can write now 16 cos to the 4th theta is equal, and in this one we can simply write 2 cos 4 theta plus, and then in this one, if we look, this is 2. So z squared plus 1 over z squared is going to be 2 cos 2 theta. So we get 2 cos 2 theta and then r plus 6. So if we now divide this out by 16, we're going to have cos to the 4th theta. 2 over 16 is equal to 1 over 8, so we get 1 over 8 cos 4 theta. This is going to give me now 8. 8 over 16 is plus 1 half, and then we have cos 2 theta. And then finally we have 16 over 6, which we can write as plus 3 over 8. And if we look back at what we were asked to find, we were asked to show that cos to the fourth of theta is one eighth the quantity. So in this case, they've just left the eighth outside. And you can quite clearly see if we've done that. I suppose I could have done that from the beginning. That's going to give us now cos four theta. Now, if we think on what this is going to be, that's going to be plus four cos two theta plus three. So we can say cos to the fourth theta is simply now one eighth the quantity four cos uh, cos four theta plus four cos two theta plus three. And there we go. So that's using De Moivre's theorem. Just a bit of a heads up, we might do one of these as well. If we're working with sine, be careful with the powers of i because we're going to be in including the powers of i in this. So just a bit of a heads up, but there we go. You might want to finish us off a little tidy, and I have looking at it. I didn't. I was kind of doing my own thing rather than reading the question on how they wanted it. But you can see if you factor it at the end, it will work quite nicely.